Hi everybody and welcome once again to The Outdoor Station with me, your host, Bob Cartwright. And what have we got for you today? Well, today we have got a bit of a video exclusive. As you can see here, uh, it is the new Nigor pack, the Zero G, a 50 litre lightweight pack which has come on the scene from Nigor. Now, who are Nigor? Oh, well, I hear you ask. They are a part of the Eureka Group, uh, which is a well-known uh, name over in the US. Uh, and also pretty well mainland Europe for all-round tents and so on. Now the um, Zero G pack here is, uh, as I say, 50 litres, uh, 53 litres in the large back length and um, 49 litres in the medium back length. Uh, we'll go into some of the features and so on in a moment, uh, but first let me take the rucksack outside for you and uh, go through it in much more detail. Let's first look at the aesthetics of the pack. As you can see straight away, it's a neat looking pack. It's fairly slim in its build, but in proportion side and front, and uh, would look good on the hill without looking overloaded, which I think is always uh, an important part of, of wearing a rucksack and having one that suits your needs. Now let's uh, look at the features uh, in more detail in close-up. Starting at the top of the pack here, we have a generous large pocket, which I've got a pillow stuffed in at the moment, and that is uh, a pretty copious size, uh, which will take a good amount of, uh, of gear, as you can see. That's the sort of size of the pocket there. I'll come on to these features in a moment. I'll just continue on the front of the pack first. The lid is attached to the main body with the uh, two straps here, and on the very front of the pack, we have what has been missing from a lot of rucksacks, a very, very deep pocket. As you can see, it goes all the way to the bottom. It's the full width of the pack. So that makes that, in my book, one of the most useful features. You can get all your day stuff in here, your waterproof gear, um, uh, I don't know, first aid kit, things you're going to, ne to need without having to get in and out of the pack all the time. Uh, so I think that's, a, that's great combined with the top pocket. Down each side, you've naturally obviously got uh, compression straps, which are uh, adjustable and obviously unclippable, so you can lash on your walking poles uh, or your sleeping mat. Some people have a bulky sleeping mat, and the length of the strap is generous enough to allow you to do that. At the bottom on each side, you've got a very generous expandable mesh pocket with a solid base. Again, important if you're putting sharper items in there like walking poles, etc. Uh, other things that have an edge to it that you don't want to get caught in the mesh and that's the same on both sides. Now this, these pockets are not only are they copious and excellent and get a good amount in there but also you can reach them when you're wearing the pack and it's very very easy to slide your hand in uh, and grab whatever you want. So again another important feature. Coming around to the shoulder harness itself, the shoulder harness is, uh, as I say, nicely in proportion. The aesthetics of this pack are, uh, are quite nice from this point of view, I think. Um, so a good padded shoulder harness, as you would expect, pretty normal for these things. A little bit of a daisy chain down here to attach various things to, uh, and of course the usual uh, chest brace and so on, with a whistle, built-in whistle. And then coming down to the hip belt, um, a good, reasonably padded hip belt, not super stiff, so it means you can actually put the pack on and, and use it comfortably straight away. And inside each hip belt fin pocket, you have a large mesh pocket, which you can see there, which is plenty big enough for a camera. And even inside that, there's a further pocket. You can just see that there, uh, perhaps for smaller items, uh, I don't know, wallet, cards, perhaps something like that, I don't know how you might want to use that. But two generous pockets on equal size on both sides, which is great. Um, now, the uh, little subtleties. Um, obviously in the shoulder harness you've got the upper cinch straps as well, which is really useful when the pack is, is loaded up. And you can see there's a couple of things on this pack which are really uh, worth flagging up. Um, there are these little loops here. Uh, where are we? Just there and there. And two little hooks at the top there. Now, um, this is really useful because, let's take that out for a second. If your pack is underloaded, not overloaded, you can compact the lid pocket down and like so and reduce it down to the lid pocket is and the whole pack takes on a much, much smaller shape. You can see that there? Um, really useful feature so you don't have to have the pack full right to the top and the lid therefore doesn't if you haven't got a full pack the lid doesn't flap about in the wind a really useful feature likewise at the bottom of the pack we've got exactly the same thing 
the same sort of system for compacting the bottom of the pack. So that brings the whole base of the pack down nice and narrow here. It brings the top of the pack down, as you can see here, and brings that lower. And therefore, when you compress the pack down on the side with your side compression units, you can reduce the bulk of the pack. So you don't have to have the pack full for it to be balanced. Obviously, a pack with loose items in it wobbling around um, is unbalanced and therefore that's what makes you unsafe on a, on a craggy uh, descent or ascent to have a loose weight. So it's good to have everything strapped down. Again, really, really good features. Right, let's move on now to the inside of the pack. There are two uh, clips here, obviously, to uh, hold the lid down. And you can see straight away there is a lash strap that goes across the top. Now the lash strap isn't removable. Uh, so it, it just unclips like that. And the lid is a fixed lid, so the lid isn't removable. Inside the lid, we have a, another nice zipped pocket. Again, the full width of the, the lid uh, for valuables, I presume, or your wallet or whatever, so you always know where they are. And then once you remove this lash strap from over here, you can see that it's got a double neck. So you've got one pull cord here at the top, and you've got another one here as well. Again, uh, thinking about how you load the pack up, if you have your normal equipment, say, up to this sort of level and the pack is packed and the, the lid is compacted, uh, you might load up with food or uh, you know, various things for a few days, and that's when you need an extra few litres at the top here, which is why you have a double uh, cord on there to restrain it all. Again, really, really useful features. So, obviously, you undo that. Now, you can see straight away that it's not the widest of necks to get into. So if you've got bulky items, say for example a big um, synthetic sleeping bag, you might find that a little bit of a narrow entrance. Um, however, it's uh, you know just one thing to keep in balance with the, the whole shape and aesthetics of the pack itself. Coming on to the frame system, let's just take that out. Uh, inside the pack here you have uh, obviously a key clip which may or may not be useful to you. Um, and then you have access to the frame slot there. Now that just unvelcros, and inside there you can see you've got an aluminium stay and a foam, um, uh, well, foam mat, foam padding, which is the back system. Now, the aluminium stay is fitted to, into two sockets at the bottom of this pocket, uh, just webbing sockets, where are we? And you can see the stay itself, where are we, there we go, the stay itself runs slightly diagonally down there, which transfers the weight nicely from the the um, to, sorry transfers the weight nicely to the hips. Uh, the stay is of course removable. That whole thing just comes straight out, and so is the foam backing. So in essence, if you wanted to, you could replace all of that with your sleeping mat folded up and tucked down the back. There's no reason why you couldn't do that, and that saving would be around the 150 grams mark. Um, but if you're carrying a heavier load, perhaps you're winter climbing or um, traveling a further distance or carrying ropes or that sort of thing, uh, then you might need the stay in to transfer the weight. But I should say this pack will easily take 15 kilos quite comfortably. Um, in front of that, we have the large hydration slot that slots down the back here, uh, which was capable of taking a two litre um, platy. Um, I'm not a fan of these things because I always find that once the pack is full, like for example with these cushions in it, um, you can't actually get in there to refill the, the bottle. I would rather have the, uh, the bottle uh, platy sitting loose on the top, or maybe even, in this case, inside that uh, zip pocket. You can have it inside the zip pocket there, and so you've always got the water out of the way when you're getting in and out of the pack. Of course, with hydrations in mind, whether you're a left or a right person doesn't really matter because you've got the hydration holes on both sides. There's one there and there's one there as well. He says, fingering, there it is there. Um, so you've got two hydration uh, points for the uh, tube to go through. And of course, that can lash onto the harness and uh, go through these reflective tabs here. So all in all, I am pretty impressed um, with this pack, I have to say. Um, as I say, it's, it's, a, it's a nice shape. It's certainly the right sort of size at 50 litres for, for most activities, whether it's a, a, a weekend, a long weekend walk, or uh, something like, uh, obviously, the, the good old TGO Challenge. Um, I think it would be ideally suited for that. It's got a lot of features on it that would make it um, uh, extremely uh, useful, uh, and certainly these additional items have been well thought out. 
Uh, for example, uh, on a hot day now, uh, you might want to uh, put all your waterproof clothing, rather than put it inside the front pocket, just lash it under the lash strap there, and that keeps it nice and safe. But at the same time, you can still get into the front pocket. Now, there's two uh, little quirks on here, uh, which I think need to be taken into account. First of all, you notice that the lid pocket is connected to these two points here, and that's got a long enough uh, neck on it to allow, obviously, the pack to be, uh, should we say, fully loaded with uh, a few days' worth of food, so it allows the top to go up and down, which is great. However, this attachment point being at the top of the pocket here does mean that when it's, the, it's under pressure, it's actually quite difficult to get the zip open. Um, either side. So that's something to take into account when you actually pack the pack and actually pull the, um, pull the lid down tight. They, that has to be released. Um, I personally would have thought or would have liked these attachment points to be further down the pack, say down here somewhere, uh, so they came up like that and you've got a bit more flexibility uh, and it also keeps them away from the front pocket. But that's not to say uh, that um, it's not going to be to any detriment. Uh, I just think it's something that struck me straight away as soon as I tried to get in there. Uh, when this was done up, it was actually quite tight. The other thing about the front pocket itself, lovely as it is, the only thing it doesn't do is breathe. Um, the ripstop Dyneema, obviously, that's all the way through the pack, which is a great material and it's got a nice durable finish to it. But there's actually no grommet holes, no drain holes at the bottom uh, and no mesh anywhere. So if you've put uh, a wet jacket in there or a wet shelter, wet tent, wet fly sheet or whatever, it's not really going to dry out very much. Um, obviously, if it uh, had some mesh, it would uh, be useful. But again, a very, very minor thing. Otherwise, I think the whole pack is um, you know, a lovely looking pack and I'm sure it's going to be extremely popular with all kinds of backpackers. Well, there you have it. Um, hopefully I've given you a lot of ideas of the, uh, the actual um, content of the pack and what it's like, uh, what it looks like. I think it's going to be uh, an interesting one on the marketplace for people looking for a lighter pack. Uh, to do um, several days hiking with. Um, certainly if you change the back frame system you are saving yourself uh, that uh, 100 grams or so and of course um, you know you've got um, uh, th that option. Now to measure your back um, you are uh, advised to do it in this particular way so you know how to do it. Um, basically if you take the um, uh, put a belt around your hip uh, area where you would want to be carrying the load and measure from the lower part of that belt up to the top of your neck um, where the neck and the shoulder join roughly where the third vertebrae is that is the uh, accepted way of uh, measuring your back to see which back length you are. If you are sort of uh, getting towards six foot and uh, you're towards the cusp of between the two measurements always go for the slightly larger pack uh, you'll find that uh, the, the smaller pack would, would actually be just that little bit too low uh, on your shoulders and you'll either be pulling it up or dropping it down all the time. So I hope that's been of some, some use to you. As I say, it's a bit of a, a new pack that's come on the marketplace from a, from a new name, but that's not to say that they don't have the pedigree to support it. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the video and of course if you want to subscribe to more of our videos and more of our uh, information that there's audio podcasts as well as video podcasts you can uh, watch this piece of uh, information and choose your uh, subscription of choice. So I hope you've enjoyed that uh, video exclusive and of course the product is available over on backpackinglight.co.uk. Until next time folks, take care out there. This machine will have eyes, ears and a voice.